Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Doug, and it's my joy to visit with you today. I begin with an update on my sister. I would ask your continued prayers uh, for Terry. Uh, she had surgery last week um, as part of her cancer treatment, and she came home this week and is doing very well. Um, so your prayers for Teresa, her husband Bill, and the entire medical team uh, are appreciated, and uh, if they'll continue, I know she really appreciates um, that support through the prayers of the saints. So I add my thank you also. I want to look today um, at a thought about the need for us to share our story, to tell our story to others. Uh, Ernest Nickel wrote a beautiful hymn that enumerates in each stanza the things we have to share with the world, a story of peace and light, a song that shall conquer evil, the message that God is love, the Savior who suffered that the world might come to the truth of God. The refrain begins with darkness, moves to dawn, and then to noonday brightness as Christ's kingdom's kingdom comes on earth. Listen to the lyrics from the first verse and refrain. We have a story to tell to the nations that shall turn their hearts to the right. A story of truth and mercy, a story of peace and light. A story of peace and light. For the darkness shall turn to dawning, and the dawning to noonday bright, and Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth, the kingdom of love and light. Yes, we have a story to tell to the nations, as that hymn writer so accurately reminds us. And it echoes then some words that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans in chapter 10, beginning at verse 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on the one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in the one whom they have not never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? The songwriter and the apostle Paul both remind us that we have a story to tell. And for others to come to a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, they need to hear the story. Well, this past Sunday, I think we had one of our most meaningful services here at Wesley Church. Why? Well, it wasn't because of the preacher or sermon. It wasn't because of music, even though it was beautiful. It wasn't even because we had a special guest. None of these things. Instead, the entire congregation came forward and shared their faith and how God has blessed them. Each person came forward and completed this sentence, I am thankful for. And their witness was so inspiring. And it was amazing as we heard about their relationships with God and their relationships with family and friends that was such a blessing. And it got me really to thinking. It reminds us all that we have a story to tell to our family, our friends, neighbors, co-workers, and other acquaintances. We can, in a, in a very non-threatening way, simply share our faith by giving God credit for a particular blessing, event, or relationship. We can share our story by how God has answered a recent prayer. We can share our faith and share how God has given us peace and strength in the midst of a particularly challenging time in our lives. We just need to share our story. How will they hear if we don't tell our story? So today, I just want us to resolve together that in this coming week, we'll be more intentional in sharing our story. We can share our story in word as we interject our faith into our daily conversations. We can share how God's hand is working in our lives. We can share our story in service to others. We can share our story that we love others because we have been first loved by God. And now all we want to do is share that love with others. We can share our story by our examples, by being distinctively Christian in our words and actions. People are watching you. They're watching me. And we want them to see someone who is authentically the real deal. 
that we have integrity in our walk with God and there's nothing to hide, they will notice and they will be drawn towards God through your story, through your life, through your example. So yes, my friends, we have a story to tell to the nations that shall turn their hearts to the right. Let's share our story with those that we love, with those that we're around and meet and greet this week. Amen. I have a few things to share about some upcoming events uh, and activities. Uh, this weekend, uh, we are doing a Community Aid Collection Days um, on October 2nd and 3rd. We invite you to bring clothes and gently used uh, shoe items, uh, shoe, uh, these items uh, for Community Aid. On Saturday, October 2nd, uh, we'll be collecting from 9 to 12, and then Sunday, uh, October 3rd, from 11 to 1. And know that your donations are appreciated. Our next Mom to Moms gathering is Wednesday, October 6th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. A fun time with our local artist, Leanne McGoldrick, and she'll be leading the moms in a guided paint for the autumn season. Kids will also do their own painting. Dinner and child care are provided. And finally, for All Saints Day, please submit photos of loved ones who have passed away between October 2020 and September 2021. You can share those with Martile Edwards or drop them or email them by the church office, but we ask you to do that by October 24th. See the bulletin for more information. Well, let's close our time with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for loving us so much and sending us your son that we might be saved and have everlasting life with you. We thank you for those who share their story and help us find our relationship with you. Help us to have the courage and love to share our story, that more may know you and love you too. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for visiting with me. Let's talk again soon. May the peace of God be with you. Stay strong and stay safe.